All right, welcome everybody. It's me, Sean Malarkey. I'm sitting here with uh, David Simon Garland, who, man, you've done a, a bunch of good stuff. We're going to talk about um, this book, David's new book, Smarter, Faster, Cheaper, here in a minute. But let me just introduce you for a minute to the audience of mine that doesn't necessarily know you. Uh, David is kind of an awesome figure. We met online a while ago. I'm not sure if we met through Lewis, my business partner, or if we just noticed each other on Twitter. I think it was – it had to have been through – everything starts with Lewis would be my guess. It does, right? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> There's actually a, a funny section in the book about that. But uh, but no, so a while ago we connected and David's got a great background. You um, – I mean I know a lot about your background. I've done a lot of research on you and you – one of the cool things is you, you had a passion for uh, inline hockey early on and started a league and um, actually doing some of the research I came across a really funny halftime show. Uh, entertainer. Oh, God. oh no, I know exactly which one it is. <laughs> Elvis the Clown. <laughs> it was Clownvis. It was half clown, half Elvis that we brought in. It, I think it was a felony in three or four different states, but we brought him in for, for an event. There's literally videos on YouTube, and it looks like the kids are more scared than they are entertained. Understood. For... <laughs> but anyway, that's an amazing story, and I think that ended up leading, or in, inadvertently, it looks like it, or it seemed like it, uh, from what I could tell, led to. Your TV show, which was the Rise to Top, and uh, that was it seemed like it was wildly successful. You you, um, you interviewed probably just about anybody and everybody uh, that's that's anybody in the blogging world and, and business world for that matter. And um, I think that has kind of you know, there's a lot of great stories from some of those interviews in here and people you referenced in here. Uh, but it seems like that's kind of led you to you know what we're doing this call for today the uh, the release of this book. It kind of sums up, in, in my opinion. Um, everything you've learned and all your experiences uh, throughout all of that process and, and growing it. So with that said, I guess let's just talk about the book for a second, David. What was your, um, what was your goal or, you know, who's this book for and, and what was your goal with writing it? Totally. So, you know, and thanks Sean for the kind words on it. You know, it's, it's interesting. I really wanted to create a book for the hustling entrepreneur. I mean, for the person that's like getting their creative entrepreneurs, people that are really trying to make it, because I think that I saw that there are a lot of books that were made for big corporations. I'm kind of an anti-corporate person, and I saw that there are a lot of books that went a lot of different ways when it came to marketing and promoting your business or yourself, for that matter. But th there was a unique perspective I thought I brought to it. Um, why I really did it was that I didn't want to write a book that was like, this is my personal story, and and you know I'm great, and you have to do it like me, because it's not true at all. Or a book that was all based on fluffy theory where, you know, it was just, oh, this is what you should do. But I, I don't really know if it works, but it worked for this guy. And what I, what I did was I kind of took my experience of taking um, The Rise to the Top, which, it, which my show and, and my platform, and taking it from zero to 100,000 viewers a month in less than two years without spending any money on traditional ads and instead doing it all through relationships and online really social media and things like that. Do you really get that much traffic on yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Man, so, that's impressive. And it's also that's a combo really iTunes. There's all kinds of stuff going on. So I took that experience plus you know 200 plus interviews, and I realized that the the top kind of marketers and promoters, the people that were building you know passionate communities and audiences and, and fans and all that kind of stuff, were doing things similarly. And this all came together to sort of be. I want to say less of a roadmap, but more of like a buffet of ideas that people can use right away for their business. So it's based on personal experience and stories, and it's just a lot of different nuggets and ideas that you can use for your business. For sure, man. And just as a testament to that, I mean, a lot of it is stuff that um, inadvertently I, I didn't realize I was even doing. And when I read it, you know, it, uh, it kind of reminded me of that or gave me that insight. And what I found funny, David, it's, it's really inspiring. I mean, I literally – Probably after about the first 20 pages, I had to stop and I was like having my ADD kicking and I wanted to go do this and go do that so I'd come back and just focus on it and read it. But man, really a good book. I liked how you interjected a lot of your own uh, personal humor in it. What would you say the most controversial chapter or topic is going to be in the book? Oh, wow. That's a, that's a great question. Controversy. I think, I think that probably the most controversial one will be when I, I do a little ripping of especially traditional advertising, but I would say that... That's not necessarily a new thing, but I think the most controversial thing uh, or, or something that people really make them think is why I believe that if you're, if you're an entrepreneur and you are looking to you know, essentially get yourself out there, that 
new media and bloggers are more important than traditional media. God, yeah. When yeah. I read that section, I mean, it um, it makes total sense. It makes total sense. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's not that traditional media is bad and evil and not worth dealing with or anything like that. It's just that, look, you've got a limited time to be forming relationships and, and focusing on different things. And from my experience and also obviously through the interviews – the bloggers and the new media sources is where, is where the magic happens. They have that personal connection like you do, Sean, with your community. I do with my community. And it's a very different dynamic. And that is what I've noticed, that some of the best marketers and promoters, they have the best new media and blogger relationships. They worry less about traditional media, even though they're involved in that as well. And I think that's a, that's a key thing in the book and also different etiquette and kind of rules of engagement that go with it as well when dealing with bloggers and new media. For sure. No press talk- releases. What's that? I said no press releases. Yeah, you actually talk about that a couple different ways with uh, Tim Ferriss spending a lot of money on a couple press releases and then Seth Godin hitting the bestseller list without doing any uh, modern marketing. And it really is true. I mean, we ha- I have a uh, slide in the presentation that we do for uh, social media and talking about the power of it and, and blogging is part of that. And we say in there that uh, I think it's 14% of people trust advertisements and kind of people trust peer recommendations, which is in a way is, is, you know, is exactly what you're saying because blogs, you know, those are communities of people that trust the, the author of the blogs. Right, exactly. And it's like, you know, in, in media, a lot of times you're, you're seeing it as, yeah, there's that trust factor of advertising and in many cases traditional media isn't necessarily there. I mean, people that go and watch and read and listen to blogs, whatever, whatever way right. it is, they are there because they want to be there. I mean, they are there because they really enjoy it and they want to get in on that topic and they trust the person. I mean, it's not... It's, it's certainly not the least passive form of media, and with that, you get the relationships, and, and that's, that's the critical thing. For sure. For sure. What, um, in the book, what do you think, for someone that reads it, I mean, you did a really good job, I thought, in the beginning of saying who this book is for and who it's not for, and uh, I really like that you said in the, in the very beginning, of, if you're looking for a get-rich-quick, uh, give this book to somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you said something like that. But, that was the but, exact you know, quote, I, I think. <laughs> yeah. No, and it's very true, but what... I guess what would be the the biggest takeaway, or the you know two three biggest takeaways, if you want you know for those that are going to read your book, what would you want them to take away from it? Sure. And so you know, first thing is to completely rethink about what marketing is and isn't. Um, you know, marketing what we used to think about was you know how do I shove my product down as many people's throats or get them right. excited about it as possible, and if they if they buy great, and if they don't, well, we don't want to deal with them, and. Marketing and promoting is a lot more, a lot different than that, and it's much more about relationship building and building trust, and, and the old idea of being able for people to know, like, and trust you. And because of that, the internet, and especially social media, but it's, it's this is not a social media book, uh, but the internet has provided this incredible platform for the entrepreneurs that are driven by passion and want to form relationships. And it's far less for the people that want to run campaigns and those things in the past. So the number one thing I would take away from it is to focus on becoming a trusted resource on a subject or in a niche as opposed to product pushing. That's one of the key things. Um, The second thing is not to be afraid of online video like this. And a lot of people are. And I think online video is, first of all, something clearly growing. We don't need to get into the numbers. Sure. So clearly growing. But a trend towards, a good trend, towards authentic real video like this. Like we're just having a conversation. It's not scripted. You're not like, hey, David, here's the exact questions and points you need to make beforehand. We're not on a green screen where it shows us in Hawaii. I wish we were. Um, but the idea that this real connection next to face-to-face, I think authentic video really forms a great relationship with, with a community and with someone. And there's a lot of different ways you can do it from a video about page to tips and tricks to your own web show. There's a variety of different ideas that you can go with that. And, uh, you know, I, I would say the third point is that people always forget the art of small talk online. Where we're talking business, we're getting through our three points, if you will, but it's the magic that happens in the relationships, uh, you know, in social media, in forums, on blogs, really getting to know people online and offline. Because the strategies I talk about aren't just applicable online. They happen in the real world. You know, it's all one world. So those are three things to really think about. Pat, and I think that's so important. You, you mentioned that in the book somewhere about um, small talk. I forget your exact phrase. It was pretty catchy, but something like small talk is gold or, or whatever. Yeah, well, digital schmoozing is the overall concept there. And then, yeah, it's something about the forgotten art of small talk. Exactly. And it really, I mean, 
it's done wonders for me. There's people that I've met in real life that I feel like I know, you know, I've known for a long time, and our interaction on social media could be summed up, I mean, in total of three, four hundred words, but yet through connecting and paying attention to each other and sharing content, I mean, it, uh, yeah, that's totally, totally true, and I, that part really resonated with me. All right, well, one final thing, I guess, um, with, with the launch of this book, super pumped for you, by the way, it's Thank an you. awesome, awesome book, and, um, uh, there's times we, we kind of joked earlier about it and I didn't really say anything, but we get books to review, you know, being in the blogging community and being uh, active in social media. Lewis and I, you know, oftentimes get a lot of different books to review and sometimes they suck. And yep. You read it and you're just like, man. And there's other times when you get it and you're like, holy cow, I did not anticipate, uh, you know, I won't say you, but. <laughs> hey, hey, look, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. But no, you read them and you're like, I did not anticipate, you know, so and so. Be, your David be you know having such good content and coming out with something so good. I anticipated skimming the book and reading through it and uh, you know and giving it a friendly review. You know nothing more. But this is one of those books that literally, um, you know, was the quite opposite of that. I started reading the the intro, got hooked, and at about two in the morning last night I finished it. So I highly highly recommend this book. I wish you the most you know the best success with it. You deserve it. And uh, actually, I don't even think you really need any any wishes or or. Uh, you know, good luck with it. It's it's going to do really well. And um, just want to say thanks for coming on today. And if you're watching this, definitely go and pick it up. I'll put a link somewhere down here. Um, yeah, you can find yeah you can find it everywhere. Smarter, faster, cheaper. dot com bookstores. Hopefully not eBay. Barnes and Noble, uh, Amazon, all of those places is that. Uh, yeah, you can you can nab it right at Amazon. Um, you know, yeah, any, anywhere books are sold. So you know, I, I appreciate Sean. You know, and I like I think it's a good thing. A lot of entrepreneurs want to be the underdog. I think I like I like having that position of of where people got it and they said, "Oh God, I hope it's good." I don't want to, you know. And uh, it's good to hear. It's good to hear the honest review on that, and I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. No, for sure. Thanks again for sending me a copy. And um, yeah, I can't say enough good things about it. Definitely go out and pick it up. If especially if you're um, if you have an idea, a product, or a service that you want to get out there. I mean, this book will. It should be. I don't know. I don't want to call it a Bible for that, but because I think people would probably think that that's disingenuous. But it literally, it's it's a great resource that. Uh, We'll teach you a lot and get your mindset straight. So thanks again for coming on, David. And with that, we'll uh, see you. In fact, before I get off, where can people connect with you? Oh, they can find me. Easiest way, go to therisetop.com, which is my website. Everywhere to contact me is right on the right side. So social media, Facebook, Twitter. I'm much more of a Facebook, Twitter person. You can find me on there at the Rise to Top on uh, Twitter, Rise to Top on Facebook, and Facebook slash David Garland. So easy enough. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, good luck with the launch, David, and we will uh, we'll see you. All right. Thanks, Sean. Have a good one.